so hello everyone uh, welcome back to make it tech channel uh, my name is jay and today we'll start with a tensorflow and uh, keras application series so what i have done with this tutorial series is uh, i've divided this series into four different categories uh, depending on a uh, basic machine learning approach i hope uh, before coming to this series you have basic knowledge of uh, what is forward and backward propagation how basic machine learning model is built it and how it works if you don't have you can check out my uh, previous video on machine learning introduction on machine learning and artificial intelligence in which i have covered each and every details uh, starting from the basic to the application uh, and till the application end so uh, regarding today's tutorial uh, this is our first session so we'll start with the first module which is data preprocessing i just elaborate what the different model will be in the whole series so first is data preprocessing second will be model designing third will be model testing and training and fourth will be uh, uh, we'll start with something called as transfer learning okay so in today's session uh, we'll start with data preprocessing so what is data preprocessing so majorly in this uh, in this tutorial we'll be majorly focusing on cnn models like which is convolution neural net or the models which are mainly used for operation with images but this uh, this type of libraries or there are various other libraries which can be used for uh, numerical data manipulation as well we will not be touching that domain currently we are just uh, working with image processing majorly image processing task so in data preprocessing what i mean in this tutorial will be will be working with images so we know that uh, whenever we build a classifier like uh, if you want to build a classifier to detect cats and cat versus dog or something uh, car or bike or human in uh, human differentiation what we do is we fit the machine two types of data one is positive data and the other is negative data what i mean by positive data is uh, it satisfies the condition which we are uh, following or we are expecting to match and the negative data is the opposite to the one which i explained so i'll elaborate this with an example suppose uh, we are working with a dog detector suppose we want our system to detect dog and if it's not a dog it is another animal which should data it's not a dog it's some other animal so here a positive data will be uh, in our condition status which is dog so our positive data will be containing images of dog and our negative data will be other animals like it can be cat or all other types of animals which we need to be classified so this is how uh, data is structured so this is for binary structuring similarly for multi class structure we have multi classes like if you want to detect multi animal multi class animals like we need to detect dog cat uh, say rat or something so we'll have multiple classes and each class have specific uh, images of that class suppose my first class is dog so my first uh, folder of the class will have only dog images second will have cat images and third will have uh, rat images or some any other animal images so this is basically uh, data structuring for image processing now what we need to do in pre processing is so as we know if we take data from some site from kaggle or somewhere it is not a perfectly mapped data by mapped data what i mean is sizes may vary of different images maybe one one can be of 620 by 480 other will be of 150 cross 150 so there should be a standard format for image like each and every image should be of this size say 150 by 150 so this is one process which we need to follow in data preprocessing second is uh, suppose uh, we don't want to work with color images we want to work with grayscale images so how can we do this in order to do this what we can do is in data preprocessing we can preprocess the color image into a grayscale image and then we do our uh, other model uh, processes so these are some of the tasks which a data preprocessing is solving and which is the most important part in building a image classifier or working with images in machine learning 
so uh, today we'll be discussing two libraries simultaneously one is pillow and another is open cv so as you can see i have listed this in my jupyter notebook so data preprocessing two libraries using open cv and pillow this both are most used libraries and both has their own uh, advantages and disadvantages i'll recommend you to go and study what are different advantages and disadvantages of this, these two libraries secondly what i am doing going to do in this uh, session is i'm going to use pillow in a way that you can actually see how an image looks after uh, getting pre-processed okay so i'll not be doing it with open cv i'll be doing it with pillow so you can you guys can get more attracted with the system and uh, the libraries so i'll start with this session i'll start with the open cv so let's start with the open cv now first we'll import open cv as you can see i am using import cv2 and uh, the other library is uh, os which is operating system library so as i told you we have to store uh, we have to use images for training so majorly what we do is we store the image in some folder of your computer and then you import them from there so to import something from your computer system in machine learning or any programming status you need to use this OS library. There are various other libraries also which you can use, but uh, I'm using OS. So then what I'm doing is I need to specify the data part. So here is the data path, how we specified here. The thing which you need to uh, keep in mind is you always need to specify R. By specifying R, it will be uh, clear that the system will search for the images in your local, uh, local hardware or local storage devices it's not uh, if you have something called as external storage devices or hard disk or something then there is various other operation which need to perform you can uh, give it h here or there are various other parameters you need to specify but i am working with my local uh, hard drive so i'll be using r uh, you can change your uh, data part here like i am using this data set which i uh, used in my previous tutorial also where i'm building the face mask detector you can check out that video also so here is my data set specified you can change it according to your data set where your data set it is stored and you can replace it with your data set location then what i am doing is i am listing the uh, number of uh, what I, what this os list directory do is it lists the directory present in that data part suppose my data part has uh, say 1000 images or suppose I have divided my data set into two set like training and testing. So after running this line, I will be have two categories like there are two points in my data data set. One is uh, train, training and other testing. So my category will be uh, labeled as training and testing. Then uh, what we need to do is uh, just skip this part uh, currently, which is not important for this tutorial. I'll explain it uh, in the next tutorial like when we start building our model so uh, this is how you list your uh, data set so in um, the mass data set like what I'm using here is face mask detector I have two categories one is mask and other is no mask so this will if I run this code it will print uh, mask and no mask so we have to wait for a few seconds I am printing it so if I do this categories I'll copy this from above and paste it and I'll run this code you'll see mask and no mask and I, what I need to do is I need to go into each and every this category and load each and every image of that category into my variable where I need to process them so for doing this I'll be using OpenCV so by for using open cv uh, you first need to specify some parameters like to what size your image should be resized so i have uh, labeled it as 200 cross 200 you need to specify some list so i am specifying here list image data will be storing the data values or the pixel values of each images and t label will be uh, saving the corresponding label so don't consider this uh, for this tutorial because we are not going to deal with labeling in this session I'll have a separate session for it. So here we go. We have loaded the this, uh, this is the list for our data set. So what I'll do is we have here two categories. Now I'll have to iterate from each each categories and load images from each category. So first I'll go with mask. 
and I'll see how many images are there in the mask and I'll start a for loop there for each image and I'll load it. So what I need to do is I need to, to I need to run two loops. First is in categories and second is for the images in each category. So for categories I'm using this loop and I'm then listing the number of images in each categories by this line of code which is specified here. So here what I'm uh, doing is I'm specifying just the folder part which is uh, you can see the about section like folder part is nothing but it is the joining part for data part as categories. So my data part is something here as different user, acer, desktop, then mass detector, mass face detector, keras master, data set, train and then again data set. So by using this join method over uh, dot part dot join I what I'll do with this this operation I'll just do categories I hope you data set sorry category so by running this line my folder path will have this command by using join category join data parts slash join categories you can directly use this also here but uh, prefer a sh shorter way to do so so i hope you understand this line of code how it works now i'll be uh, what i'll do is i'll list the number of images in, in each category so this command list directory will list each number of images and into image name now what i need to do is i need to run a for loop in this images so as i can load each and every single image so I'll run a for loop here so what I'm doing is I'm again using image dot join folder plus folder part plus image name so folder part will have the complete data set for mask or unmask and I need to load each and every single image so I'm joining with the image name so after that I'll be using cv2 dot im read this is the function to read an image where we need to specify the image path or the image location so by specifying this argument we specify the image path here for each single image like I am running in for loop so consider this I am loading a single image at a time so I will load it an uh, instant call as image now here I am using try and exception method which I prefer uh, each time to use because if there is some exception with the image we need to uh, figure it out what, what I mean by exception is image can be a uh, horizontal one it can be split into verticals it is a blur image this type of uh, exception can handle by this case so i'll do try and in that if you want to co convert your uh, color image into a grayscale image you can run this line of code where cv2 has function for converting uh, of one form of image to another form of image we have a color image and we need to convert into grayscale image so we what we do is we first specify cb2 dot cbt color then the uh, original image which is this one image i'm specifying here it also then what i do is cb2 dot color dot bgr to gray this is the command one thing you need to uh, keep in mind here normally when we operate with a color image the formation is rgb but with open cv the formation is bgr that's why i'm specifying here bgr many a times uh, students may ask the question why you are specifying bgr it should be rgb right but uh, for open cv we have it as bgr for detail you can uh, go to their uh, like their website and see how it works so this this step is actually optional if you want to convert your image you can or if you, want, if you don't want to convert you, uh, it's completely dependent on you then the most important uh, command here is cv2 resize so as i explained you need to resize your data to a fixed data so that data manipulation should not happen so this line of code do do the same where you use cv2 resize and you specify your previous image in our case we have converted into a gray and again we are giving, fitting that gray image to the resize module and you need to specify the bonding where to what side you want to resize it so i am resizing it to 200 cross 200 you can do it according to your convention and then what i am doing is i am appending this numbers like this data to a list called as data append so sorry i have misplaced the it is this one i am image data not append so what this line will do it will append all the resize image data to this list 
okay the second line is regarding the labeling which will not be considered in this session and i hope this exp this is clear for you guys so i'll just load this so this will take a uh, few minutes for me i'm using a i5 computer then too it takes around so 5 to 10 minutes to load this type of bigger data set uh, it completely depend your, depends on your system maybe you are using GPU it will be very quick and if you are using other versions then it, it may take some time so uh, there is no error in the code so we'll move to the next section now as we know no there is no single computer which can actually process the image directly what computer understand is a image should be converted into a certain numerical value so that computer can interpret it so this numerical value is nothing what before we call as a numpy array so now we have a data set which has specific values for each images now what we need to do is we need to convert the data set into a numpy array so for that we first import this library called as import and numpy as np then we spread our data into this line of code where we convert our data into a numpy array the next step is called this is called normalization which actually what this with this line do is we convert our pixel value which majorly uh, are generated in 0 to 255 range to 0 to 1 range so that our computation becomes easier so this is the process to do it and uh, you can uh, see more tutorials like youtube has a lot of them to actually verify this and how it works you can change it and also verify in this code too so the next is we have done the data resizing right for our image res resizing now what we need to do something called as reshape okay so what is a reshape now when we convert an image from a, a raw input to a numpy array so what this do is it continuously keeps storing data for every images we need to segregate each images from the other one so what we do is we reshape it so for that we create a numpy uh, array of say it will have number uh, total number of uh, rows will be uh, equal to number of images present number of column will depend on what the image feature is or the what the size of images it is three dimension or two dimension so we need to specify this all thing in order to uh, for a faster computing application so this line of code actually do show so what i am doing is uh, i am specifying an array of size data which means if i have 1000 data uh, sorry 1000 images so the size of this uh, numpy array or the array which we are creating as data will have 1000 rows and the column or the dimensional structuring will be this thing like it will have uh, sorry sorry the first argument is so uh, what what we mean by uh, data reshaping is so we have a numpy array right take two uh, start from here again okay so data reshaping we are in data reshaping what we are doing is uh, in order to store numpy arrays of each image segregately we need to specify a different numpy array which has specific dimensions uh, so in order to do that uh, this line of code is actually run in which our first argument data dot shape specifies the number of images uh, data set has suppose i have 1000 images it will correspond to 1000 second argument is the image size what size of images we have we have here 200 cross 200 comma 1 and comma 1 specify if you have a grayscale image so we have converted our image into gray if you have not converted your image into gray you should specify here 3 so this this need to be taken care uh, then we need we also need to uh, if you are starting with labeling also so we need to convert our labels also so this line of code actually do, do that but don't consider it currently because it's we formulate a tutorial for like specific for labeling 
so we have created a numpy array where we have stored all our data values image data values now in order to uh, make a model more precise we need to shuffle the data right the data should not be in flow otherwise it will have first category mass uh, up to one one level and then the other so model can get uh, overfitted in order to overcome this we need to shuffle our uh, data set for that we'll be using this uh, shuffle uh, import library before that uh, i'll just delete this line of code which is not concerned here so using this we actually shuffle our data library and at the current at the same time we also shuffle the labels corresponding to it so this is how we pre-process uh, uh, data using uh, open cv so uh, once we have seen how a data is processed now we should start with the labeling process so what method i'm using for labeling is So the method which I am using for labeling is uh, I am labeling the whole category according to their position. Suppose I have two categories. I am currently uh, doing mass detection to have mask and unmask image. So what I am doing is I am labeling zero for mask image and one for unmask image. If you have some other categories, say dogs or cat, you can label dog images at zero or cat as one. So to do this, I'll be running this line, two lines of code, which you can see I'm actually creating a label dictionary here and I'm iterating through the categories in this for loop and assigning the categorical class, the value of I, you can see here, if my first category is say mask and my I is at the position of zero. So my mask category will be labeled as zero. So each image is in my mask category will be labeled as zero and correspondingly. So after running this, you can see what it will print. It will print as with mask, it will be labeled as one, oh, sorry, zero and without mask will be labeled as one. This is the technique which we use for labeling. Now in the second set, what we'll do is we'll uh, store the data into two different lists. Okay, so I'll just get it done. So you can, as you can see here, we have T label, which will save the uh, label for corresponding image. Suppose my first image is of cat. So I need to save my label somewhere so that I can interpret between these two like my first image. What is my first image? So it should be cat. So my label should be zero over there. So in order to do so, I'll be uh, assigning same uh, dimension of list which uh, we have assigned for data set. So T label is the labeling directory. And similar to data, we'll be appending our label in this format like by following this code. You can see here. Exactly. So here I'm using target. So it should be labeled again. So label and data should be image data. So this is how we uh, load each and every label for corresponding image. Now moving for uh, as we are converting our image into a numpy formation, we also need to convert our labels to a numpy formation. This can be done by following this line of code that is that simple to do so and you can just follow this line of code so that your label will also get converted into numpy array then uh, so there are two types of basically classification methods one is binary and other is categorical so by binary what we mean is the uh, end level probability suppose my test image is of dog so the probability that image belongs to the dog category will be from 0 to 1 so if my I got a value of say 0 0.6, which is more than some, some threshold value. So in binary classification, I'll consider it as it's not a dog or it is uh, the second class one. So this is the first category, like uh, how we do binary classification. There are also second type, which is called as categorical classification, where we specify a metrics for a specific uh, classes. Like my matrix have, will have one row and uh, n number of column. So n, where n is the number of categories which I am classifying. Suppose here I am classifying two categories, say dogs or cat or say mask or unmask. So I will be having two columns and one row. 
where first row and first column the um, uh, value and in the first row and first column will specify the probability that the test image is belonging to the first class and the correspondingly the sec first row second column will specify the probability the test image is belonging to second class so in this way uh, these two categories are these two method can be used for labeling here i am using the second one so we need to uh, convert our normal labeling to categorical labeling so this line of code do the uh, do the task for us and then what what we do is the shuffling of data which is important for overcoming overfitting or avoid overfitting so this line of code is doing so so this is how we use uh, opencv uh, for image uh, loading and processing pre processing so the uh, so in the next tutorial we'll see uh, how can we use pillow for the same and how a image is uh, image looks after getting resize or pre process so see you in the next tutorial